So the first step in any mutation guide is obviously making new friends. We have to tame as many creatures as we can of the target species that we want. In this case, we're going to be going after tech rexes. Best place to get tech rexes is on the moon biome, the lunar biome on Genesis 1. So that's where we are. And we're going to be taming a bunch of tech rexes. Now, I wanted to show you guys a little something about Dodo Dex. Okay, this is Dodo Dex stat calculator. And you can put in the wild tame stats of your creature before you tame it if you want. You put in health, stamina, oxygen, food, weight, melee, all of that. Make sure you have the species and the level above. And you can see when I take out my awesome spyglass that the stats are exactly the same. Now, most of the time, some, some people out there say that the melee does not work. But for some reason with the tech rexes, it definitely does. When I put in these stats, it shows how many points are in melee. So obviously, the higher the stats, the better. Um, Pre-tame is cool because um, you'll see how many stats you have in it as pre-tame. And then you're going to get the um, efficiency levels as well as you tame it, right? So if you're in a 150 server, official server, you're going to get 74 levels that are going to be um, randomly distributed through the seven different places now you also have a wasted stat which is usually movement speed um, and and points will go into movement speed even though the creature does not um, actually uh, have points in movement speed it doesn't actually help so basically what you want to do again is just tame a bunch of these creatures whatever creatures that you want in my case again as tech rexes and if you want to you can check their stats before you tame them up and uh, but for me personally i usually don't even bother doing that i will just tame a bunch of them and um that way we have more in our cupboard so to speak with the more creatures we have the better chances we're going to have um the high stats that we're looking for right so just tame as many as you can for me i'll tame them all at the same time i will try to find as many as i can um, if I can drop them into traps, then great. If not, for me, nothing that really attacks Tech Rex is on the move. So what I'll do is I'll just knock several of them out. I'll move on to another one, start searching for more. And then I will mark them within my taming hub. That way I know where they are because I'm old and I will forget. I forget all the time. I can't tell you how many times I have found tamed dinos um, somewhere later on. But yeah, just make sure you mark them in your taming hub. Throw some kibble on them, or you can starve tame them. It's really up to you. And But yeah, that's what we're going to do. We're just going to try to get as many tech rexes as we can. We'll knock them out. We'll tame them. And we'll have lots to choose from um, when we're looking for stats. Uh, again, this is completely uh, your prerogative, how many you want to do. If you think you've found some really good stats early on, or you're really, you know, you're being more... Um, more stingy with what you tame in other words you're kind of looking at the pre-stats with dodo decks first and for sure you don't have to tame lots of the creatures but for me i like to try to get 15 20 25 30 creatures you know and i want to make sure that I, I spread them out between the two the two sexes as well male and female right because if i have all males then that's not really going to help me when i'm trying to breed later on but anyway, that's the idea. Get as many as you can. At least personally, that's my way of doing it. Get as many as you can. That way, at the end, you know you're going to have some decent stats because you've tamed a whole lot of new friends. Um, and that's how you start the, um, the, the journey to getting mutations. Uh, this is step one. I hope you guys will stick around for step two. And yeah, this is making new friends. Okay, so the next thing um, that we want to do, once we have um, a bunch of Rexes tamed, okay, is, or whatever creature you guys are wanting to mutate, is we want to line them up. I have 10 females here that I have um, <clears throat> tamed, and I, I believe I have some males as well. But what we're going to want to do is you just go into the inventory and basically what we're going to do is we're going to we're going to number these rexes like so okay now i'm going to go ahead and
go onto my PC screen to show you guys how I do this. So with Tech Rexes and a lot of other boss type creatures as well, I am looking for health and melee. That's it. Now, if you want, if you're using like a flyer or something like that, you want to add stamina, weight, things like that. You can do that also. Okay, but for me, it's just melee and health. So what I'm doing is, without putting any levels into these dinos, is I'm I'm typing out what they have for each of these things. So this one has 449% melee. And 14,960 health, okay? So we're actually going to move these a little closer here. Okay? And then number two is going to be zero, two. And so over here, over here what I'm doing is I'm numbering them, okay? So I'm just coming in. That way it corresponds with what I have in my document over there, right? So this one here is going to be number two, or in this case, is zero two. It really just depends on how many you tame up. The more you tame, the higher the number is going to be, right? So then we're just going to go ahead into the inventory again. Now you can see right away that this one has far lesser stats, right? So 384% melee, 8580 health. So neither one of those is higher than number one, right? So then we'll move on to the third creature, which is going to be number three. Okay, so again, we're going to name it number three. Or zero three in this case. And we open it up. We have 396% melee. And 12,540 health. All right, and I'll fast forward until we're in, until I'm at the end of this. Okay, so you'll notice out of those ten rexes, all females, I have two that have 449% in melee, and I have one that has 14,960 health. So my highest health and my highest melee, I got lucky here, are both on the same rex for just females now. Okay. So what we're going to do is we're going to pull that one Rex aside, okay? And that's where we're going to be on melee and health for the female side. So here she is. This is our highest leveled uh, Rex um, so far for both melee and health, okay? And bringing out my awesome Spyglass. Now, obviously, y'all don't have this. But you will see that she has 63 in health, 55 in melee, okay? So the way the levels work is it, the total levels you have in the creature. So in this case, 388. Essentially, you, uh, essentially those 388 levels are added into the different attributes in the dino. The different stats. Except for one level. Okay, so you'll notice if you added up stamina, which is 53, right? 53 plus 50 in oxygen is 103 plus 53 in food is 156 plus 56 in weight is 212 plus 55 in weight in melee is 267 plus 57 in movement speed is 324 plus 63 in health comes out to 387 and the dino is level 388. It's always one level higher than the than the stats that are within it okay so if you have a level 200 that means you have 199 different points that are in the various stats in the creature there's always one level that's that's kind of wasted okay all right so now let's get our males out and we'll do the same process so the other thing I do have to mention before we throw out the males here is that my, this is not official settings. Official settings on official network is max level 150 for regular dinos and 180 for, um, for tech creatures, okay? It's essentially, I believe, a 20% increase in level for a tech, tech animal, okay? 
So if you are on a uh, on an official server, you can find a 180 tech creature will be your max level. And the max cap on an official is 450. So if you have a dino that is 450 or above, it will be deleted. Or 451 or above, it will be deleted. Now, on my server, the, the, um, the creature max level is 180 and tech is 216. Now, on top of that, I have the shiny mod in as well, which can make these creatures even higher than that, okay? And I think our highest um, tech creatures are going to be probably shinies, okay? Um, but that's not going to change the way the video is, okay? So anyway, let's get the, the, the Rexes out, uh, the males out, and um, we'll continue on with this. All right, so here we are. We have our, I, I think it's 15 male Rexes out. And I have um, compiled their stats. And let me show you what we came up with. So here are the 15 male Rexes right here. And here are the 10 female Rexes up here. You'll notice that no longer is the 449% melee the highest stat. It is now 490 from one of the males, which is perfect. Because that means we have one stat on each, each gender side. We have the melee. We have the melee on the male side. We have the health on the female side which is perfect because now what we want to do is we want to mate those two creatures to get all of the stats um, on one baby. So let me get rid of all of the males we're not going to use and um, I will be right back. All right, so here they are. We have number, um, let me see here. Let me get rid of the awesome spyglass real quick. Um, hello. There we go. All right, so we have number one, which is our best female with 14,960 health. We're going to double check that. 14,960. And then we have the number 23 male, which has the 400. Hello? We'll do that again. Which has the 490% melee. Now, we actually got pretty lucky here as well. In that both creatures are only one level off of each other also. Which is going to be helpful later down the line. Now, let me explain if you have both sets of stats on the same gender. So let's say the melee and the health were both on a female. Okay? What you want to do then is just pick a male that you like, that it's pretty colors or something, and because the stats are not going to matter, okay? And then what you'll need to do with that in that case is, like, let's say you have a female that has, let's say this, let's say both of these were females, okay? You would have this one with the melee, this one with the health, and then you would have a male over here that would breed with both of them until you got a male breeder with one of the two stats from these girls, Okay? So you would just mate a, a male with the two females, the health female and the, um, and the melee male. I'm sorry, the health female and the melee female. You would mate them with just a regular male um, until you got a melee or health male. And then you would just breed that melee or health male with the opposite. So let's say you got a melee male, then you would mate that with the female health. So that's what we're going to do. We're going to go ahead and rename these now to health on this one. Okay. And then melee on this one. Okay. And that's going to let us know which is which. Now, with the advent, with the advent of Genesis 2, we now have something called mutagen in the game as well. So let me explain to y'all what that is. So I'm going to go in here and grab my mutagen. Which is right up here. Um, I'm going to grab a stack of this. Okay, um, we'll probably need more than that, actually. Grab about 400. And so what the mutagen does on a wild-tamed creature, it only works this way 
on a wild tamed creature. This will not work on a bred creature, so remember that. If you have bred the creature, if, it, if you have breeded it and it was a baby and then you grow it up and you put mutagen in it, it will not work this way. So what you want to do, and I'm going to show you this with awesome spyglass. So this one here is my melee, which has 62 points in melee. All right. And this one here is my health, and she has 63 points in health. When you feed them mutagen, it gives them five additional base levels in health, melee, stam, and weight. So it'll give 20 extra levels, which is almost like 10 free mutations, okay, essentially. So what we do, again, this one has 62 in, in melee, and she has 63 in health. So we'll actually get those to boost up by five. So we're going to put this in there, and then you force feed the mutagen to them. And you will notice immediately that his melee went to 515.4%. And you'll notice it is now 67 points in melee. All right. So now our 490% melee is 515%. Just by adding mutagen. And it took 87 mutagen for that to happen. So we do the same thing to the female. And now you'll notice that her health has gone up as well to 16,060. And she's now 68 points in health. And that is how you start this process of stacking mutations. You now have a male and a female and now I'm going to end this video here and you guys can come back on the next video and I will show you the very next step. Thanks for watching. If you want to see more like this, you can of course subscribe, show the video some love and I will catch you down the road. All right, so we have our health tech rex and we have our melee tech rex and we've been breeding them for a little while. And so I've got 10 eggs that we have gotten from them in our incubator now the incubator again is um unlockable at level 89 i believe and basically what we want to do is we know that the melee is 490 percent or 519 now after the mutagen and we know that the health is 16,060. okay so now what we got to do is attribute how many points are in, how many points is that or how many levels, right? So we look at this and we just by looking at this we can tell that 68 is going to be our high in 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 um, in health and 67 is going to be our high in melee. Okay? So then what we want to do is we want to find a male and a female that have the 68 points in health and the 67 points in melee, okay, out of these eggs. So there we have one male. All right, so I'm getting rid of these eggs as we go. We have another male right there. This one is bad, so number three we're going to crack. Number four is bad, so we're going to crack that one. And this just immediately gets rid of the eggs we don't need, okay? There's another male with 68, 67. Um, number six is a female, but not with, this, with, not with the stats, so we get rid of slot six. Slot seven is a male with the two stats that we want. Slot eight is a female with the two stats that we want. Slot nine is a female with the two stats that we want. And slot 10 is a male with the two stats that we want. So out of the 10 eggs, we got um, two, three, seven of them that were, that combined the two stats, okay? So now, if you get extremely lucky and you find two, um, a male and a female with the two stats that you want that are the same level, if you are lucky enough to do that, then you want to use the two that are the same level. We got that lucky. 
Okay, we got a 415 right here. And we got a 415 right here. Um, right there. So slot 1 and slot 9 are both the same level. Alright, I'm going to tell you why that matters. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to crack these eggs. Unfortunately, the babies are going to get picked up. So number 1, we're going to hatch that egg. Okay. And number 9... We're going to hatch that egg. All right. And now they got picked up by one of these soul terminals. So we're going to go ahead and find them. There they are right there. So now, we just want to make sure that these two babies have the same stats, the same points in every single stat, okay? So we just want to make sure they have the same exact stats before we go forward, okay? So we're going to go ahead and toss both, both of them out. They're both the same level, which is great. But we want to make sure they are identical stat-wise, okay? And the way you do that is you just check their in you just check their stats. Now the so sixteen thousand sixty twenty nine forty. Both are the same nine hundred twenty one six hundred. Nine hundred twenty one six hundred eleven ten five nineteen. Um, everything's the same, so that's great. So, we know those are the same, so we're going to go ahead and put them up for a second. Alright, I need to turn, um, okay, so I, I do have a nanny here that I have to be careful of. Okay, so, if you do not get, if you do not get two of the same level with all the stats identical like we did here, if you don't get that, then you're going to have to take any two, as long as it's a male and a female, okay, like you could take this one and this one, and they they have the 68 and 67, as long as they have the, the health and the melee that you're looking for, what you would do is you would grow these two up, and then you would mate them together until you got a male and a female of the same level, okay? Because the next step is to grow up our two babies and I will fast forward until they are completely grown. All right, everyone. So now um, we have both of our babies um, are grown up. They're both level 415. We got extremely lucky in finding two, um, a, a male and a female um, straight away with the same levels. And so now I have named the male Perfect M1 and I have named the, the female Perfect F2. And as you can see, I have them mating right now. So what we want to do now is we simply want to mate these two together until we have, at least personally, the way I do it, is until I have two perfect males and ten perfect females, okay? So I want to have two males that are exactly the same and ten females that are exactly the same as each other, all level 415, all with the same levels and the same stats identical creatures uh colors don't matter at this point if the colors are different that's completely okay but what we're looking for for me personally i want to have one male breeder then i want to have one backup male and then i want to have 10 females that i'm going to be breeding with all along so she just dropped an egg so we're going to grab that egg and we'll bring it to the incubator and you will see that it will be level 415 now, if it has a mutation, it will be higher than that. But it will be level 415. It cannot be lower than that. So we put that in there. And it's a male 415. So this is going to be our second perfect male. So this one will be perfect M2 when it is born. And um, I will be right back once we have um, 
10 females and two males. One thing I do have to add, if this takes some time, because sometimes you'll get nothing but males, if this takes some time, as you are getting female eggs, so the next one we get will be perfect F2, we're gonna, we're gonna grow that up, right? We'll, we'll grow it up. And if we don't have our 10 females by then, we can add perfect F2 to this and mate that one also with perfect M1. And that quickens this, um, quickens it a little bit, okay? But I will be grabbing eggs from these two until I have 10 females and two males. And uh, I'll fast forward through that process right now. All right, so we are back and check it out. We have eggs. And I'm going to collect all these eggs and then show you what we've got going on in here. Um, a couple of things. <clears throat> so, we have our perfect lineup. Okay, so the way this works now is I put 10 females, all identical, and one male that is also identical. So here is my male, perfect M2, perfect male 2. And then I have perfect females 1 through 10 around him, okay? And so all of these 11 dinos, and then I have a backup male as well, so I actually have 12 total, are all completely identical and completely without mutations. That's really, really important. They have to all be without mutations, okay? Now, most people will also not have any imprint on them either, okay? So that's also, um, that's your prerogative, because imprints can add, uh, will, will add um, stats, okay? But for me, it doesn't matter, because I'm on PC, and I can see the stats um, with um, super uh, awesome spyglass, right? So I can see the, the stats with awesome spyglass. Essentially, I can see um, what has changed between imprint and non-imprint, right? So, if I'm on PC, <clears throat> I will also hitch them to a hitching post. That way they will breed even when I'm not around. <clears throat> and that's what you do. So, you just want to keep getting your... Um, keep keep um, keep mating your, perfect, your first perfect male and your first per perfect female. Until you get as many females as you want to breed. If you want to breed 20, you can. If you want to have... Um, three different males with ten females on each of those males, you can. If you do that, it will go faster. For me, I just do one male, ten females. It's easy for me to, um, it's easy for me to keep track of. And it also is, ma makes it easier for me to just add the ten eggs to an incubator. Because that's how many slots the incubator takes is ten. So yeah, that's the next step. And um, I will catch you uh, very soon with this step after this one, which is where this really starts getting tedious. So I'll see you in the next one. Hey guys, welcome back to the Mutation for Dummies series, and we are on step four. And step four is when we start looking for mutations. So we have our ten perfect females, and we have our two perfect males. And now I have collected 30 eggs from them. But, I want to show you guys what to do first in case you don't have an incubator, okay? So what you want to do is go into each of these creatures. Or, really, you just need one because we know that they're all the same. And just write down the six pertinent stats right here. That's health, stamina, oxygen, food, weight, and melee. Okay, movement doesn't count. Although movement, uh, they do have points in movement, right? As you can see, they do have points in movement with the awesome spyglass. You can see that. There's 46 points in movement. But their movement will always be 100%, even if they get a mutation, okay? So that doesn't matter. The six that you need to worry about are health, stamina, oxygen, food, weight, and melee. Write those down. Put them in a document. Have your base stats somewhere, okay? That's important if you don't have an incubator. Um, in, in, in other words, if you're trying to do this before level 89, okay? But... If you are after level 89 and you have incubators, and the incubator does all of that work for you. I have 30 eggs here, and we're going to go through them, starting from the left. 
We're looking for anything that has 417, level 417 or higher, or because you can get a double or triple mutation. If you got a mutation, it'll be 417. If it'll be a double mutation, it'll be 419, and a triple would be 421. We're looking for 417, okay? There's a 417 right there. Now, the next thing we want to look for is, is the mutation, the 417, the mutation that made it go from 415 to 417, is it in one of the two stats that we are looking to mutate? That being health or melee. Well, we know that our health total is 68 points. And we know that our melee total is 67 points. So we can see from here that the mutation did not go into one of the two stats that we're looking for. Now you can look at the egg next to it, which is your base stats. And you can see where the mutation was. So 60-61... 50, 64, it was in food. Now you can see the food value is 62 here and 64 here. So we know the mutation went into food, okay? That's how we know where it went, which means this egg is no good to us. Next, we just keep looking for more 417s. There's another 417 right here. Now, same thing, we can see that oxygen in our base dinos is 50 and it's 52 here so we know that that mutation went into oxygen which means it's not in health or melee so we can keep moving on and we keep looking until we get a 417 with a mutation in either health or melee here's another 417 this one is also in food you can see 62 food in our base 64 in this one so that's another food mutation that we do not need okay 415 415 415 415 here's another 417 right here this one is also an oxygen 50 points here 52 here no good and here's another 417 and it looks like this time the mutation is in it's also an oxygen again. So we got four mutations, I think, four or five, and none of them are the health or melee that we need. So none of these eggs are any good. So we keep doing this until we find one that is a 417 level, level 417, with either 70 in health or 69 in melee, okay? And I will come back when we have um, that dino. So, okay, super lucky, guys. The very next um, set of eggs, which I just went up to collect, literally yielded us a 417 with a mutation in, um, in melee. So you can see, if you look at the egg next to it, which is our base, 415, we have 67 points in melee. This one here has 69 points in melee, which means we have just gotten our first mutation. So what we're going to do here is I'm going to go ahead and well, we'll check the other eggs too, just to be safe. Okay, here's another one that's in, um, I'm not sure what that's in. It's in stamina. There's another one here that's in stamina. Wow, we're getting a lot of mutations. Um, and the rest of them are no good. So only uh, slot one is, is where we want to keep. The rest of these we're going to crack. And I'm going to try to explain what happens next the best way I know how. So we, um, we are quite lucky here in that our first mutation is actually a male. Now, our females that are upstairs, I'm going to try to explain this as best I can. These 10 females that are here will never not be used. Okay, They will always be here. And the only thing we're going to change out is the male, okay? So we have a perfect male, too. And right now, since we just got a male baby with a mutation, I am going to get rid of, or cryo, our perfect male, and we're going to put him up, okay? I suggest you keep these in a cryo fridge or soul terminal or whatever together. That way, that way you don't 
lose them, okay? It's really important that you don't lose any of these breeders, okay? Because you might need them again, right? That's why you want to have a fridge like this. Now, or, or a terminal, cryo fridge or terminal, or wherever you want to keep them, okay? Now, this baby right here is going to immediately take over as our male breeder. He will have one mutation, and he will start breeding with all 10 of those females once he is grown and ready to do so. Now, what happens if the mutation that we got is in a female? Well, you can do one of two things in that case. You can either ignore it, which is what I do, because um, I want the mutation in a male. And eventually, I am going to get a mutation in a male baby. We got real lucky to get one right away here. But if this was a 417 female, then I have two choices. I can either ignore it um, and continue looking for a male, or I can take that female, grow it up so it's an adult, and then I would breed that female with the one mutation with the perfect male that we started with. We have two of them, male one and male two. We could take that female and keep breeding it with a perfect male until we get a male baby with the new mutation, okay? So in other words, what you would want to do, you would take the 417 female with the mutation in melee, and you would breed it with your perfect male, who is a level 415. And you will take the first 417 male baby with one mutation. Okay? That's what you would do. Until that, this is why I ignore the female mutations. Because it's just easier to keep it clean. And you're only going to be able to mate one female with one male with that. You know, if you find a female with, with, with the mutation that you want. It's only going to be a one-on-one, -on -one, which means it's going to be one egg every however often that your dinosaurs can breed, whatever your uh, server settings are. It's much easier for me to just keep breeding the, the, the mutated male with the perfect females until I get a baby male with the next line. So anyway, we got 417 here. This is a 60. Okay, so we're going to go ahead and crack. Uh, we're going to hatch that egg. We don't want to crack it. Okay, and one of my soul terminals is going to grab it. So we'll find it. Um, there it is right there. And I'm going to show you how I name these babies as I get them mutated. So what we're going to do is uh, toss them over here in my grow up area. And for this one, um, let's see here. Uh... There it is, right there. So for this one, it is going to be a one mutation in melee for 69 points. So that's how we're going to name it. We're going to throw it. So it's going to be... Oh, it's going to be one mutation in melee. One melee and 69 total points. That tells me... That I have a mutated, I have a mutation in melee, and the total amount of melee points is now 69, okay? And again, just to show you guys, the current melee now is 531.6 on this baby, okay? If you do not have awesome spyglass or an incubator, 531.6, and the number we started with was 5, what, 19, I believe, right? Could you work? Could you work? Hello? Could you work? Oh, my gosh. Okay. Um, we'll try that again. So you'll notice that our perfect females have the 519.8. So even if you don't have any way of seeing the level stats of your, of your creatures... You can still check their base stats. This one is 519.8. The baby is 531.6. My suggestion to you, though, is if you're doing it that way, you don't have access to the admin blink rifle or awesome spyglass or incubators or anything like that. My suggestion is, suggestion is do not imprint your babies because you will need to know 
what your base stat is. In this case, your first mutation in melee has um, added about 12% in melee, okay? So, um, yeah, that's how you mutate creatures. And um, I'll show you what we do next once this baby's grown up. All right, guys, so our first mutated baby has become an adult. And here he is, again, one melee, 69. We're going to grab him, and we're going to move him over to a new area I have created for just this line. Okay, so what we, what we have here is our 10 perfect females, numbered 1 through 10. All right. And we're going to hitch them all to the hitching post. And this is... Four, six, eight. So only eight of them are within target of that. All right. So let's let's go get the tech one, and that one should be better. I hope. So if you're wondering what a hitching post is, if you are on vanilla arc or console arc and you're not able to get to these mods, it just essentially hitches the dinos to the hitching post, and um makes it so the dinos think you're in render the whole time so basically it allows them to continuously drop eggs even if you're not online um, and it helps with the automation of what i'm going to show you all next um, so in other words what would happen is if um if i didn't have the hitching post it would just pause the dinos whenever i left the server and then whenever somebody came back within render or i came back onto the server then um, it would start up again. The hitching post allows it to essentially continuously um, continuously make babies. Two, four, six, eight, ten. Okay, good. So we'll hitch them all to the hitching post. And again, this will not matter on single player because when you leave single player, it um, it it automatically pauses anyway. But, here we have our first meleeed, or first mutated breeder. And I'm just going to toss a saddle on him and make sure that he is in the center here as much as possible. Alright. Right, that'll probably work. And we're also going to hitch him. And now we can essentially start the mating on this guy and then copy it to all the other Rexes. And so now you just want to make sure that everybody is breeding, right? So you want to make sure all 10 of your females are all breeding, or mating, rather. Okay, we're good there. Now, let me show you the automation we're going to use to to find dinos for the mutation, okay? Again, if you don't have mods, then you will have to use the incubator, and you're only allowed to have three incubators within a certain amount of area. So that means 30 eggs that you can check at a time, okay? And again, the hitching post won't matter in that case because you'll be on vanilla. But for me, I've got, um, I'm going to set up automation, all right? So these here are from the dino storage v2 mod and this allows us to have soul terminals and it also has newborn trap automation so what we do is we hold e over it go to options and the newborn auto trap and we're going to enable that and i'm going to turn the rage down just a bit just because we only want we only wanted to pick up the the rex babies here okay so there we are we just want to make sure that it's only going to pick up from this area here. And of course, you're going to have 300 soul traps in here because that's as most the most that it can hold. And I will explain what this means in a minute. We're going to do the same thing with this one. I'm going to turn down the range just a little bit. And uh, we don't need the visible on that. And we're going to turn visible off on this one as well. All right. So there we go. We have both of these working. And what's going to happen is um, I just need to see if these eggs are going to incubate or not. <clears throat> okay, so the egg health is going down, so those eggs are spoiling. 
So we have to make sure that they can incubate. All right. So what we're going to do is make a few air conditioners. All right. Um, let me take off GCF because I don't want to cheat. So we're just going to make a few air conditioners, probably like, I'll probably put in seven. Okay. And I have, holy crap, those are heavy. Okay, let's put TCM back on so we're not heavy. There we go. Okay. So now um, we should just place the ACs somewhere around here. I have tech generators um, placed pretty, pretty. Um, what do you call it? Widespread around the base. Basically, we're just gonna put these ACs like in the middle of these. All right. So that way. Hopefully they will incubate the eggs. All right, so now we check the eggs again, and now they're incubated. Okay, perfect. So let's make sure all of them are incubating. Definitely incubating. Definitely incubating. Definitely incubating. Good. 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 All right. So everybody's doing well. So if you have more, uh, essentially what you could do if you wanted to uh, double, triple, quadruple your chances is just make more males, um, more, uh, more females rather. So you can have 30, 40 females, 50 females. And then just have a, a male for each one of those. Okay. And then, yeah, you just keep doing that. Um, and that will increase your chances. But basically what we're looking for now is we have all 10 of these females that are completely base. They have no mutations in them. If my buttons would work. Okay, we'll do that again. So they have no mutations in them on either side. So they're completely base. Zero out of zero on both sides. And there's ten of them that are identical. And then the male is our one melee 69. Right? So he's got one melee mutation. So now what we're looking for with this next generation is we're looking for a 419, a level 419 baby, male, um, with either a health or, um, or a um, melee mutation, one of the two. And then we just keep doing that. Once we find a second one, um, a second mutation, we would replace this male. And um, I'm going to go ahead and fast forward until that happens. All right. So it didn't take too long. Um, about 30 eggs for it to happen. Um, as you can see, we have nothing here. 417s and 415s, right? So we're just going to destroy all of those. But then over here... We've got a 419 male health mutation. Booyah, there's number two. Number two. And I'm going to try to explain how this works. Um, you will see that the plus two is in health in the middle of your screen. Plus two is in health. Okay. And um, before we start this, I kind of want to explain a little bit of how mutations work. So you'll look at our 417 melee mutation. And that mutation is on the dad's side. Now, every single time you get a mutation, there's a 50-50 chance of it being on the male side or the female side. Okay? But once, um, once all the mutations are together, in other words, for example, let's, let's take this one out of here. I'm going to try to explain. We'll take this one out of here. And we'll destroy the rest of them just to make sure everybody's good. And then we can take the 417 male who's just been replaced by a baby. We can 
take him out of there. And then I'm going to try to explain how this works. So, like I said, every single mutation you get is a 50-50 chance of being from the mom and a 50-50 chance of being from the dad. Okay? So, let's look at this again. Here is our baby right here. It's got one H70 and one M69 now. So, we have two mutations, one in health, one in melee. I'm going to show you how I label that in the name of the creature. Once we have the right creature in our hands. So I always go with health first. So it's going to be 1H70 and 1M69. Okay? And then we're going to look into the creature. And you'll see that this mutation came from the mom. Right? So there it is right there. It came from the mom this time. But... The next mutation, the next generation, when this one here becomes a dad or, or, or an adult and then becomes my breeder, he is going to have one of, one, of, one of 20 on each side. But the next baby he gives birth to, the first two mutations that are already in, that's the one in health and the one in melee, are both going to be on the dad's side because they're both on this dad right here. And then the third mutation has a 50-50 chance of being from the mom or the dad. So the next mutation could be a 3 out of 20 on the dads, or a 2 out of 20 on the dads, and a 1 out of 20 on the moms. But you got to remember that every prior generational mutation is always going to be on the dad's side. That is really important. Okay, so in other words, I can't show you now um, with this one, but you will see it's 1 out of 1 on each side. Again, I will show you one out of 20 on each side right here, okay? Again, the next baby is guaranteed to have two out of 20 on the dad's side because both of these mutations are on this male. And then the new mutation will be on the next baby, the next generation. And I will fast forward to when we have the third mutation so I can show you. All right, guys, so welcome back. We have our third mutation on a male right here in front of us. We got um, we got another melee mutation, which is 71 points now. But I kind of wanted to show you, because where we left off before, we had two on the prior baby. In this generation, I told you we were guaranteed of having at least two mutations on the patrilineal side, with a 50-50 chance of there being a third, okay? So here we see that we have all three of the mutations on the patrilineal or dad side. Two of those are generational mutations that came from prior generations. The third was the 50-50 chance between a male and a female. This case, it came from the male. If it would have came from the female, then it would have said one out of 20 on the matrilineal side. So that's how we have this baby with three out of 20. The next baby in the fourth generation is also going to have at least 3 out of 20 on the patrilineal and possibly a 50-50 chance of having 1 out of 20 on matrilineal or 4 out of 20 on patrilineal. That's how it works every single generation. Now, um, you will see over here in my collection that I am collecting babies and we're looking for 421s. Now, we've already found our melee mutation right here, right? We've already got our third one right there. But I wanted to show you some possibilities um, while you're searching. Okay, again, I'm using soul terminals to collect babies. If you're using the hatchery, that's fine, or the incubators, that's fine. Um, any way that you are collecting them, that's fine. But essentially, we're looking for 421. So all of these are bad, except for this one, which is a 421. Once we find our next level, which again is 421, you get two levels for every new mutation, okay? Now we're looking for the plus two to be either in melee or health, okay? So we know currently that we're at 70 health, 69 melee. So even if you're using a hatchery or, um, or an incubator, you should already know what your stats are and what you're looking for. In this case, our plus two came in stamina. So we're not interested in that in that egg or baby at all. We got a mutation, but it's in stamina, and we're not looking for stamina. Okay, 
We look in the next one, and you will see, again, we're no changes in our females. But we did get two 421 males. Okay, the first one is another stamina mutation. And the second one is an oxygen mutation. So both of those are not in the health or melee. So that's where we're at. We don't need any of these. So we can just get rid of all of these, right? They're no good. They're not going to extend our line whatsoever. So the good news is, is we did get our third generation male right here. And that means we can replace the second generation male as our breeder right now. And that's a 421 a level 421 male. So the next fourth generation, we will be looking for 423. Now there is a very, very minute chance that you could get a double or even a triple mutation. Okay, I've had a triple mutation once and double mutations are more common than you would think. But the only time that you are going to keep a double mutation is if you are extremely lucky and they both are in, in one of the two stats that you're looking for, which is health and melee. You can get a plus four in either one or you can get a plus two in each. I've never had that happen in five years of, uh, of mating in this game. Okay, so there we go. We've got that one mating again. We're going to wait for our fourth generation and that's going to end this portion of of the mutation for mutations for dummies. The next step that I want to show you is what happens when we get to 20 out of 20 on the patrilineal side. So that's going to be our next video. Um, I hope you stick around, maybe subscribe to the channel to get more content in the future, and I will catch you down the road. Hey guys, so you have happened upon my video because you are absolutely corn fuzzled and perplexed as to what a ghost mutation is. Well, you have come to the right place because I am going to do my very best to explain to you not only what a ghost mutation is, but how to avoid them and also why they are extremely bad for you. All right, so here's what I'm going to show you on the left hit. Excuse me, on the left-hand side here, I have a male and a female Paleo Arc Tyrannosaur. These are part of my mutation stacking line. Now, what I want to show you guys is each one of these T-Rexes has an extreme amount of random mutations on the dad's side. And that's because they are essentially my breeding line. Okay, these are extras from the breeding line. So you will see, again, 46 on both of them on the dad's side, and this one has one on the mom's side, okay? So that's 93 total mutations, okay? Now, if I took, say, this Tyrannosaur right here that has the 1, in tw 1 out of 20 and 46 out of 20, if I took this T-Rex and I mated it with a T-Rex with no mutations in it, Right? Like, if I... I'll, I'll show you. Like, if I come over here and I grab my original male... That's not the right box. It's this one. So, if I came over here and I grabbed my original male, which is the perfect one, which has 0 out of 20 and 0 out of 20 for mutations, right? Uh, if I took this one... What's up, uh, Big Worm? If I took this one, which has, again, no mutations, this male, if I took him, and I mated him with this one that has 47 mutations, then that would be completely okay. We would not get any ghost mutations in the next generation, whatever the baby is. Okay, there will not be any ghost mutations. And what that means is that each one... Of these 47 mutations here, each one of them has added a an additional stat to this dino that has those mutations on it. However, if I take this one, which has mutations on it, and this one, which has mutations on it, and I breed them together, now 
they're both dirty. They're both they they both have mutations in them already. So you don't have a perfect, pure male or female to breed with the other one that's loaded with mutations. So then what you end up with is you end up with what's called ghost mutations. And here is the baby of these two here. Again, remember, this one has 46 mutations. This one has 47, which is why this one is two levels higher. And you will notice that this one is actually the same level as the dad. They're both level 365, right? But you will notice that this one has double the mutation. That means you have 93 mutations on this, on this Rex. And only half of them have actually changed the stats. The rest of them are ghost mutations. Essentially, all the mutations on the mom's side here are all ghost mutations. None of them did anything to help the dino. It didn't change color. It didn't gain stats. Nothing happened, except we got all the mutations from both mom and dad, which is why you always, 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 always want to have a purebred, non-mutated female or group of females to mate with your males and the males are going to continuously get mutated. I will show you what I mean. So all of these females over here, this is the same uh, paleo tyrannosaurs. All of these females are level 273 and they are stat identical. None of them have mutations in them. No mutations on either side. But the dad or the male breeder right here has 47 mutations on him 46 on the dad side one on them on the moms and i am breeding him with all 10 of these females until we get a 48th mutation and i'm guaranteed of the mutation being a legit mutation and not a ghost mutation because all 10 of these females are non-mutated once you start mutating i'm sorry once you start breeding or mating um, a mutated animal with another mutated animal, that's when you get these ghost mutations. And the reason why that's bad is because now you have both sides filled up with mutations. And this is infinite. You can get thousands and thousands and thousands of ghost mutations, and they're doing absolutely nothing to your creature. So if you've got 5,000 mutations on your creature... None of those mutations did anything for the creature. They're, they're all ghost mutations. Okay, again, unless you are breeding a mutated animal with a non-mutated animal. Then whatever mutations you get from that are going to be clean or non-ghost. But in this case, we have 93 mutations. And because of the 93 mutations, this creature right here, Ghosty, can no longer get any actual mutations, okay? You can't get any more because both both sides are filled with ghost mutations. Absolutely not, Wolfie. Absolutely not. I'll explain to you in a minute, okay? I'll explain that in a minute. No, you've been told wrong. But anyway, that's how to avoid getting ghost mutations and that's why you don't want to get them also. You avoid them simply by making sure that one side is bred without mutations. And like, for example, when I'm starting a line, I have 11 um, creatures, all identical stats. One male, 10 females. And then I keep rolling those until I get a mutation. In a male, baby, right? And then as long as my females from that point forward are absolutely clean with no mutations on them, I don't have to worry about ghost mutations. You do not want animals with thousands of mutations on them because you're not doing anything. The base of the animal is still exactly the same. Again, I will show you with Awesome Spyglass. If Awesome Spyglass will work, that these two combined have 93 mutations that have been put onto this baby. But you can see that the baby's stats are exactly the same as the dad 
exactly the same as the dad. It's got nothing. It got no additional stats from those those additional 47 mutations. That's what makes them ghost. So if you have any questions, guys, let me know down in the comments below. I hope this answered your questions on what a ghost mutation is, how to avoid them, and why they are bad. Um, if not, please let me know, and I'll try to explain in the comments. Um, thanks for watching, guys, and I will catch you down the road. Hey, guys. Welcome to another ARC video of mutations for dummies. And in this one, um, I want to teach you guys um, kind of the same concept with colors as you would do for stats. So a lot of people, um, in, especially in PVE, don't really care about um, mute or, or breeding for, for stats. Um, they, they prefer to go for colors. There are other people who try to go for colors and stats. Um, in this video, by popular request, I'm going to show you guys how to get the colors you want on the dinos you want um, as you are essentially breeding. So we're going to do that in this video. So anyway, basically what you do, um, since you're going for colors, um, it doesn't really matter what dinos you do. Um, but for me, I just use my regular line of perfect Rexes. These are all perfect. Um, they have high melee and high health. This one has the perfect ones have 43 in melee, 51 in health. And then I just breed them um, for regular stat mutations. As I'm doing that, I am collecting dinos, right? So basically what I'm doing is I am looking through the dinos as I get them, or the babies as I get them. We'll try that again, all right? So essentially, as I get the dinos, right? So here's some, uh, uh, let's see. I guess I don't have any Rexes in here right now. But let's just say that I'm looking for um, 222 as a, as a, as a um, color ID. And you can see in the zero region on this Megatherium, I have 222. So basically, I would just keep breeding until I get the color that I want in the, um, in the region that I want it. So in this video, I'm going to show you how to get essentially for... Me, I'm looking for only 79, which is the color region called actual black. Now, I have been mating these 10 females with a male Rex for, I think it's 56 mutations now. So, it's been about a month of just solid breeding those guys. So, here is my current breeder that is growing up, I just got. So, he's got 54 mutations. 24 in health, 30 in melee, okay? And obviously he looks massively different than the perfect ones that I have inside that I started with. But over the time of me breeding all of these, I have been looking for the 79 region, the actual black. Now, all of these dinos right here have come from those females in there. And every single one of them has the actual black 79 in them in a different region, as you can see. All right, so this one has it in region zero. This one has it in region one. This one has it in region two. This one's in region three. This one is in region four. And this one is in region five, all right? So basically what we're gonna do, since now we have all six regions with the colors that we want, right? And again, this has taken over a month of breeding. This is not a... a, a a, a fast process, okay? And you just kind of have to sift through your dinos. Eventually, you will get the colors you want. You just have to pay attention. So basically, what I want to do is I want to turn these six babies into one creature, preferably two, a male and a female, that is completely actual black, just completely 79. So I'm going to grow these up, and then I'll show you the next step. Right, so now we have our six Rexes all grown up, and I have two males and four females, and I have broken off one male with these two females here, and then I have broken off the other male with the other two females over here. So now what we're trying to do <coughs> is we're just trying to get multiple 79s on, on, an, on a baby, right? So obviously... 
if you want different colors, then you would combine them a different way. But for me, since I'm doing them all on the same color, I'm just looking for multiple blacks on the same eggs. Okay? And thankfully, with the incubator, we can see that. We have no 79s there. We have 179 there. None there. None there. Right? So, we have one there and one there. Okay? But what I'm looking for are two. So, I'm going to keep going until we... Um, until we get a, until we get two, all right. So we're just gonna crack all of these eggs. It'd be cool if I could just crack them all at once. Guess we can't though, huh? So we're just gonna go ahead and do that, and I'll be right back when we have two seventy uh, nines. All right, so we have an egg with regions two and region five. Um, with the 79 so that's a start so now what you want to do now and since this is a male baby right so this is a male okay so the male um, I have it written down I have the male right here has the region 5 right here right so basically this one and this one these two here just gave me um, the baby with the with the with the five and the two. So this one and this one can go away. We don't need them anymore. So that um, that two slash five, uh, the region two and region five um, on the male replaces both of them. And then I will uh, once that's grown up, um, I will be right back. All right, guys. So we're back, and we actually have. Um, two different males now, both with two regions of 79. So we have region 1 and 4 on this Rex right here. So I have paired that one now with the female that has region 3. Okay? And then this male over here has regions 2 and 5 as black. And I've paired him with female that has the zero region as black. So now what I'm going to do is I will breed these ones together, these two and these two, until I have um, babies with three regions with, 60, uh, with 79 on it. All right, so we're back, and we have a male and a female each with three um, regions of 79, and they're the opposite of each other. As you can see, my male has zero, two, and five regions as actual black, and the female has one, three, and four as actual black. So, this will be the first egg we're taking from them. Now, we're halfway through this um, process of trying to make um, all six regions basically what I want. Okay, so basically from this point forward, I am keeping any male dino that has four or more, four or more of the color regions that I want, four or more, okay, and I'm keeping any female that has, the, has three or more, okay, so it, it essentially has to have three or more here, four or more here. Um, and that's how we will eventually get six, okay? Because basically, I have one female. So if I if I get any more females that have three color regions as 79, then I can add them to this um, breeding um, to the male, and it doubles my chances, essentially. So we've gotten through the easy part. The hard part is getting uh, fourth, fifth, and sixth color regions to, to match up. That's when you really need more than one female. So, um, this process will probably take me a little bit longer, but I'll see you, um, when we, uh, get, uh, probably, uh, I'll see you when we get five out of six on both sides here, okay? Okay, guys, so I literally, literally just ended the recording for that last part. And this is the first egg that we got from the three out of six, three out of six. And look what has just happened. 
We got six out of six. Literally in the first egg. Okay? Literally in the first egg. This is insane. Um, so, wow. This is actually crazy. So we have our first actual black Tyrannosaur. Paleo Tyrannosaur. On the first egg. Um, uh, at the halfway point. Um, I'm actually, like, blown away. That's why I started the recording again. This is actually crazy. First egg, we have a 3 out of 6 on the, on the, on the female side and a 3 out of 6 on the male side. And all of them lined up on the very first egg. That is absolutely crazy. Um, so basically what we're going to do now is we're going to take this baby, which is a male. It's going to replace our 3 out of 6 male over there. And then he will, um... He will mate with the female over there until we, uh, I mean, ultimately until we get a female um, with, the, with the six out of six as well. Once we have a, a male and a female of the six out of six, um, I will be back when that happens. Okay, 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 okay. Um, super lucky once again. Um, how do I get rid of this? Is it backspace? It is. Okay. Super lucky. Our first egg from our 3 out of 6 male and our 3 out of 6 female gave us twins. Um, both, obviously, are fully actual black. Um, let me show you. All six regions, 79s. It also has the 103 melee from my um, from my line. It doesn't have the health, but um, it has the melee. Um, so basically, all I would do is mate these two together um, to get um, more more black dinos, essentially. And then what I'll do is I will try to get the health from my boss line onto these creatures as well. And then my boss line will be completely um, actual black. But yeah, that's how you do it, guys. You just have to be patient. You're probably going to have to breed a lot more than I did. I did get super lucky. Um, really, really lucky, actually. Sometimes that happens. More times than not, you're not going to get this lucky. Um, but I hope you guys enjoy this. If you have any questions about... Uh, anything really about breeding for colors or for stats or anything let me know in the comments down below um, really super excited to get um, six out of six on my first egg from the three out of six couple and then have that egg have uh, be twins it, it's insane insane luck my first all actual black rexes paleo rexes too And, uh, yeah, so thanks for tuning in, guys. Um, if you like this video, show it some love. Took a lot of time and effort to put this together. Um, and, uh, of course, if you want to see more like this one, you can, of course, subscribe. And I'll catch you down the road. Hey, guys. Welcome to Step 7 of Mutations for Dummies. Uh, we have finally, after about um, a little while of uh, breeding. Um, again, I've been breeding 10 are 10 females with one male and switching out the male every mutation we have finally gone over 20 mutations okay so we are at the 20 mark and i just want to show you what happens and kind of try to explain how this works uh, because this is the most confusing portion of this okay of this uh of the mutation process okay so here we have our first uh dino with 20 Okay, he's got nine points and oh, nine mutations in health and eleven in melee. And I kind of want to show you guys the ancestry. Okay, you will see here that this dino has the nineteen generational mutations from the patrilineal side. That basically means that we have had nineteen different male breeders. Okay, and this one is the twentieth. Okay, so. 19 generational mutations meaning that those mutations came from a prior generation than this one this generation 
came from the mom, which is why it says 1 out of 20 on the matrilineal side. Okay, the next dino, this dino right here, is guaranteed to have 20 mutations in patrilineal. Guaranteed. It cannot be higher than that. Uh, because you can no longer get a, a, a mutation from the baby. Because you know how normally you get a mutation in an egg? And you have a 50-50 chance. You have a 50-50 chance of it being from the mom and a 50-50 chance of being from the dad. Well, this dino right here already has 20 out of 20 on the dad's side. So it cannot get another mutation on the dad's side in this generation. It'll always be on the mom's side now. And for that reason, your mutation getting is going to be limited in half. It will be cut in half. Because now you can no longer get new mutations from the patrilineal side. You will only get them from the matrilineal side. And all your patrilineal mutations going forward are going to be generational. That means they came from, be, from before this egg. So again, basically what this means right here now is there have been 20 male breeders before this dino that we're looking at right now. And this dino... The mutation came from the mom right here and it's going to look like that in every single dino going forward so this one here will say one out of 20 mom 21 out of 20 on the dads it's going to be the same thing all the way down the line now it'll always be one out of 20 over here and then the generational mutations will be over here so the next one again It'll be 1 out of 20 matrilineal and 22 out of 20 on the patrilineal. It's going to be exactly the same all the way up. All the way up. Okay, this is going to be 1 out of 20, 23 out of 20. Okay, it's not going to change. The only thing that changes after you get to the 20 mark, which is right here. Again, this is 21. So this is the first dino that has 20 on the dad's side. The only thing that changes, I will repeat, is you have only one side to get a mutation from, and that's the mom's side. Going forward, beyond 20 out of 20 on patrilineal, you will no longer be able to get a mutation from the dad breeder. All the dad side mutations will be generational, which means they came from beyond, before this dino. So again, I could line them up, I'm not going to, but... This number means that there were 23 male breeders prior to this dino existing. And then this dino got the mutation from the mom. And it's going to be the same all the way down the line. Okay? So that's the tech rex. And that's what happens when it gets over the 20 out of 20 from, from, the, from the dad. All right? From the patrilineal side. The generational mutations that I'm trying to describe to you all. Now... I kind of want to show you guys um, what happens when you double those mutations as well. I just kind of want to show you and kind of fast forward where I'm at. Because I, um, I started my Paleo Rexes probably about three weeks or a month or five weeks, somewhere three to five weeks before we started the tech rexes here so i've got a lot more mutations on these creatures and i just want to show you that it's exactly the same no matter how far you go okay so here's so i'm just going to use three here okay so we'll use three and i will show you again that these dinos will only have mutations on the mom's side. It'll be 1 out of 20, and then all the generational will be on the dad's side. Okay, now watch. So this one right here has 29 in melee, 23 in health. Which means this has 52 mutations total. Okay, that means you're going to have 1 out of 20 on the mom's side, and 51 out of 20, on or 52 out of 20, wait a minute. Yeah, 51 out of 20 on the dad's side. Okay. Boom. It, it adds up that way all the t every single time, all right? So this will be 1 out of 20, 52 out of 20, see? Now, 
as long as you don't fill up the mom's side of the mutations, you can keep adding mutations. 1 out of 20, 53 out of 20. And as long as you are keeping the same 10 females that you have started with at the beginning, which I have over there, and you switch out the male every generation. In other words, you get a new mutation in a male, you switch out the breeder, you, you breed that male with all of those females. You will never fill up the matrilineal side, which means you can get infinite mutations. However, there is a cap on that. And the cap is 254 levels, all right? So it's not mutations, it's levels. So you see here, let me go to the newest one. This guy right here has 99 points in health and 103 points in melee. The highest number that I can have in both of those numbers is the number... 254. Now, the reason for that is because um, essentially you can have 254 wild points in each stat. Okay, now each mutation, each mutation gives two levels. So that basically means you can have 127 mutations without the base levels, right? So, in other words, you, you can only add up to 254, 254 points in the stack. If you go over that cap, if you go, if you have 255, 260, whatever, then you can't add XP levels into that stat. So that means basically, right, like, if you go in here and you have levels or points available to add to your stat if your melee damage or your health are 260 you have 260 points into that stat you cannot add your xp levels into that stat so what you want to do is you want to go you do not want to go over 254 points okay you don't want to do that especially if you're on official because on official you have a hard level cap of 450 on your servers. So that means if you have a dino that is level 450 or above, they will delete it. So I'm going to teach you next how to get as, as many points as you want, but still not go over the 450 level. Don't go anywhere, guys. If you want to see more like this, make sure you subscribe to the channel. Because the next video in this series is going to teach you how to stay under that level cap. Hey guys, welcome back to Mutations for Dummies here on Ark Survival Evolved. And we have talked a little bit in this series about the official level cap on, um, or the maximum level cap on official servers. Okay, now that official or maximum level cap is 450. So, as you're trying to get mutations, and for us it's with Rexes, right? As you're trying to do so, you're trying to add as much health and melee as you can. And the limit is 254 levels in each of health and melee. Um, unfortunately, this Rex that I have um, picked out is picking fights with everything in the world over here. So... So we're trying to keep it alive while I'm doing the intro here. But this is a level 18 um, Paleo Rex from the Paleo Arc mod. And we're going to knock him out. And we need a really low level. Okay, and this is a female, so that's actually perfect. So we're going to try to knock it out. There we go. We got it knocked out. And then we're just going to punch it down so that it doesn't... That's not my punch button. Um, and then we're just going to punch it down so it loses all of its efficiency. We want as little levels as possible. Right now we're going to get nine. And this is the lowest level Paleo Rex I could find on my server. Okay? So what we're going to do is we're just going to punch it. Until we can get that down to essentially no percent. Okay, 
We would really, this is good. We got zero points in weight. That's going to be helpful. One point in movement is going to be helpful. One in oxygen. That's going to be helpful. We got to get that seven points. Seven points in stamina is too high, dang it. So it is at 22. It's gonna get one level right now, so this would be a level 19. I would love to get that. I, I don't know if that'll go down to zero, but we're gonna find out. Actually taking damage myself too because um, you take damage when you punch. Put the heal up a little bit. All right, so we're just gonna leave this at the one level, and we're gonna tame this up. So we're gonna use the lowest food that I have um, available on me, which is let me see, is it probably raw meat? It is. It's raw meat. So we're just gonna toss the raw meat on there. Because, again, we don't want levels. Levels don't matter. We actually want the least amount as possible. Okay, we want as least amount as possible on the levels. All right. And we're just going to throw out um, my Bindi. And, yeah, we will be right back once this, once this girl is tamed up. Alright, so we are back. We just finished taming that Paleo Rex. We got one point from it. One one point from taming efficient or effectiveness. And so it's got three points in health, four in melee, which those two don't matter, which is great. Those two don't matter. It's seven out of the 19 points that don't matter. We got seven in stam, one in oxygen, two in food, zero in weight, one in movement. All very good. So that means we, we can breed in essentially 11 points into the other two, four, five categories. So 11 points, which is going to leave us 439 points. Um, 439 levels for the other things, the, uh, for, for health and melee, okay? So we got those two, um, and so we're going to bring this um, female Rex into our line, and um, yeah, that'll be the next step. All right, guys. So here, right here on the left, we have the um, we have the female right here that we just tamed, and I also went ahead and tamed a male as well. And you can see they're both level nineteen, su super low level. So at this point, you have a choice. If you really want to get the lowest of the low, then you can combine these two until you have the lowest stats of both combined, right? So like this one has seven stam, this one has two. So you could you could breed these two, mate these two, to get the lower of the two stats onto a baby. Essentially, get all of the seven stats, the lowest ones, or five because health and melee don't matter, onto a baby. So if you really want to get every last level, that's what you can do, okay? Or you can just keep taming low-level Rexes until you find, until you can get them with one or no points, right? Um, in each stat. But for me, I'm not going to be that big of a stickler. I'm just going to use the female we got that has seven in stam, one in oxygen, two in food, zero in weight, one in movement, and then the four and three, the four in melee and the three in health don't matter. That's a female. Now here is my current breeder. You can see that this dino is level 385, all right? 385, no levels added to it yet, okay? I have not added any levels to this dino. I have not added any points anywhere. And currently, if I did, it would be a level 410. 420, sorry, 420. Hey, 420. But anyway, and if I did that and I was on official servers, that would mean that I would be literally 30 levels from being at the max cap for an official server. 
Now you see that I have 101 points in health and 105 points in melee, which is less than half of the cap for each stat, which is 254. But I can get this dino's levels down to half of what it is currently just by mating these two together. Okay, so what we're going to do is we're going to breed these two together until we get the high melee and the high health from the dad and the low everything else from the female. And we will do that. We will continuously, we will keep mating these two until we do that. We will also um, add any female eggs that we get to this to make it faster. Okay, so that's basically what we're going to do now. And I will come back once we have a baby um, with the high health, high melee, and the low everything else. Okie dokie. So here's what we've got after a full day of breeding um, the male and the female. Um, of course, the male that had all the, the high melee and the high health. And then we were trying to get all of the other stats to be lower. With the female, the level 19 that we um, tamed, which is right there still. Um, so let me show you where we're at. These two right here and then this one here have been added. So this is the new male. And you can see that the new male has the high health and the high melee. But it still has the weight as well from the original male breeder. Okay. So we still need to get the weight off of this one. The 32 points in weight need to come off. And then this female here is another good one that we pulled. Has the 101 in health and the 105 in melee. It has the low weight, but it has high movement speed. And then these two over here are just completely lo all low stats. All seven of the stats are low, okay? So we're, we're continuing to breed these two as well just for extra chances, but I don't expect that we're going to get our baby, our, our eventual baby out of, this, out of these two. It's going to come from these two. So basically what we need to do now is we just need to get a baby that has all the combined stats of these two um, breeders, the male and the female, but we want the dad's movement speed and the mom's weight. Okay, that's where we're at. And I'm going to continue breeding all of these until we get to that point. All right, so here we are. We have our two Rexes that are ready to go. We have a male and a female, both the same level, 218. And you can see low stamina, low oxygen, low food, low weight, low movement speed, high health, high melee. So we have 206 levels in health and melee only out of the 218 on the Rex. Plus whatever levels that you can add to them after they are adult, obviously, right? So I think we can add like 60 plus levels to the dino as it uh, levels up, as it gains XP and what have you. So essentially, if we can, um, let's say we can add 60 levels. I'm not sure what the actual max level is. Um, as far as XP goes, maybe somebody out there can comment down below what it is. Um, but let's, um, let's let's estimate that it's 62. And that means we can add 62 levels to this, which would put us at 280. Which means we still have 170 levels before the official server maximum level cap. That's a lot of levels you can still add to health and melee to, and still keep it under the 450. So yeah, basically what we would do now is we would just mate these two together and to get as many babies as we want. Um, but yeah, that's how you do it. That's how you avoid the max level cap on official servers. Um, I hope you guys got something out of this video. If you did, please show it some love. These videos took a lot of work, time, and effort to put together. And if you'd like to see more like this, you can of course subscribe. And I will catch you down the road. Hey guys, welcome back to another ARC video, Mutations for Dummies. I wanted to show you guys this video as the last one in the series. Um, we recently started playing on PC ARC probably about two months ago. And let me tell you guys, if you are on vanilla or you are on console 
and you've never played with mods before, oh my gosh, it is night and day. The quality of life changes um, are just night and day. So I wanted to show you a few different ways of um, getting mutations through modded arc. I'm going to be showing you guys essentially two mods today. One is uh, Structures Plus, and the other is Dino Storage V2. Um, I will put the uh, I will put both of them. Uh, I will put a link to each one of them in the description below. I'm sure both. I'm sure most of you guys who have played Modern Arc have um, are familiar with them. But the first thing I wanted to show you guys um, is the S Plus egg, egg Incubator and what makes it better than the vanilla one. Now, the two changes that I have seen is when you go up and hold E on it. The first really cool one is the manual temperature control, okay, um, or the automatic rather. You click on automatic, and this will automatically control the um, the temperature individually for each kind of egg, okay. So even if you have different egg types in the incubator, um. You guys are noisy. So even if you have um, different egg types in the incubator, it will um, automatically choose the correct temperature for each egg type, which is going to give you a 20% incubation boost. Um, on vanilla, you have to manually figure out which, um, which temperature is good for the egg, and it will only work for one type of egg. The other really cool change between vanilla and S+, is the auto hatching eggs so you can click on auto hatching and that's what it'll do it'll automatically hatch the eggs and if you couple that see like it just it just you saw that it automatically hatched those eggs and then the babies were sucked away i don't know why this one's not working there it goes the babies were then sucked away by this little contraption right here this is called a Soul Terminal, which is part of the um, Dino Storage V2 mod. That's what this is, okay? And so what you do with this is you can hold E on this, and it will it has a newborn auto trap. And with this, once you enable it, any eggs, fertilized eggs, um, that drop a baby. Oh, let me put it this way. Any baby that is born within its vicinity, as long as this has soul traps in it, right, it will pick up that baby and keep it in that terminal like you just saw happen over there. So those babies are now in here, okay? We've got a twins right here, and then here's the other two, all right? So that's how, um, that's my favorite version of modded mutating. Okay, um, I use the storage, um, the um, the soul terminals more than anything else. Now, the next thing I want to show you is the hatchery. Okay, now I want to remind everybody that these here soul terminals are available at level one. Okay, this Bronto is seriously going to come over and mess up my video, right? Is that what's going to happen? Probably, probably. And then uh, the incubator, as you know is a level 89 structure, okay? Now these over here, the hatchery, you can get these fairly early in your gameplay. They are, um, let me see here. They are unlocked at level 30. And I will explain how these work best I can. I don't use these because I like the soul terminals better, but they work okay, all right? Then I will show you how. So the first thing you wanna do Take out your S plus um, structure multi tool, and we're gonna change the the whatever it does to from structure to dino, and then you can see on it it says kill. If it doesn't say kill, just hit right click until it goes on to kill. All right, like that. Now, each one of these will hold twenty five eggs. And each one of them will incubate your eggs down to 1%. All right? Let me turn this off. 
because we don't want the babies to be picked up. But if you have both of these mods, by all means, you can use these together. Absolutely, if you want to. All right. For me, I just have air conditioners out where I do my mating. The eggs drop. They automatically incubate. They get picked up by the soul terminal, and that's how it works. But with these... If you have a tech generator, they will stay powered. That's how I have mine powered. If you don't have a tech generator, you can use D fertilizer to um, power these, okay? Hold an E on them, you will see the range. And the range is pretty big. It's really big, actually. Like, it goes all the way over there, all right? Um, the range is pretty big. You can have it stop collecting eggs. You can view a destroy list. I'm not sure exactly what that is. You can view a just uh, an ignore list. Um, and that's essentially it. Okay, so then what's going to happen is these are going to collect your 25, 25 eggs. And you can see that they're all down to 1%. All right? These are all ready to, to, to hatch, essentially. Okay? So what we're going to do is um, our eggs are a 389 is my max level breeder. So we're looking for a level 391 baby. All right. So what we're going to do is we're going to open this and then we are going to, I think we just dropped them all, right? Is that how we do it? How do we do this? Um, do it like this. And then I suppose we could just bring them over here to the air conditioners. Alright, and now they'll all hatch up. And so we're looking, so we got a mutation here, obviously. Well, no, we didn't. So we're looking for a 391 here. And barring a 391, we just want to kill them. So this is a way that you can do this with the hatchery. The hatchery will automatically pick up your eggs and get them down to the, the, to the correct incubation. Or down to, to, to 1%. 1, 1 and you can do the rest. Now, I'm on PvE, so I'm using the multi-tool to kill these guys. But if you are on uh, PvP, then you can just have, you can just have, like, a, one of your creatures kill them or something. I'm not sure. I don't think that'll work on um, PvE. I could try it. Keep in mind, guys, this is my first time really using the hatchery here. I really kind of wanted to show you the other later game stuff. So, let's... Let's see if we can't kill these guys with a with a creature. I don't think you can because it's PVE. Yeah, I can harvest the dead bodies, but yeah, they, because it's PVE and no, no. So anyway, yeah, these are all. Um, you can just check them. Claim them and check them. Guys, if you know of a faster way of doing this with the, with the hatchery, please let me know in the comments. Um, but yeah, you're looking for whatever number you're on. For me, it's 391. I personally like the soul terminals better than this. And you can use them at level 1. As long as you have, obviously, soul balls. And that takes a lot of crystal. And it doesn't look like we got any 391s here anyway. I'm sure there's a better way of doing this. At least, uh, maybe PvP, it's just better on PvP. But yeah, you would just keep doing this until you found a 391, or a mutation rather.
So that is essentially the hatchery. We only got one more. And I am gonna harvest them with the Giga. Alright. So that is that. And um, so, yeah, the next thing I'm gonna show y'all is called the Propagator. And that's this thing right here, okay? And this works interestingly to me. Right now, it's not working at all because I'm lagging. Okay, we'll wait. So essentially, the propagator, which is, hold on. Uh, level 111, so it's beyond max level. You're actually going to have to get extra levels in order to unlock this. But it is worth it. Oh my god, is it worth it. So essentially what this says is it breeds dinos from cryopods. All creatures will produce eggs. That's important to remember. Cryopods will not lose charge, must contain adults, and genders cannot be changed with a mating cooldown. This consumes one element for every... Um, I'm not sure what that means, but I'll explain the element part. So essentially, you can put lots of dinos in here. And it will give you an egg for every single one of them, even a male. Okay, so if I had two males in here, it would give me one egg. All right? Not two, just one. I have one male in here, ten females. So here's how you set this up. I do not have any element in here. So we're going to put some element in here. So essentially, the way this works... Is for every one element, we're going to prepare dinos, we're going to start breeding. All right, so for every one element that you put in here, each one of these is one dino that's in here, okay? For every one element that you put in this box, you're going to get a mutation worth two points. And you have a maximum of 10 element that you can spend per dino. And you can, in, in your I and I settings, you can change that as well to make it more or less expensive. For my server, and I think it's um, standard default, it's one element per mutation. Or I should say one element per two points. And ten element max. And what do I mean by that? So for a vanilla mutation, every mutation you get is worth two points or two levels in that stat. If I were to put 10 in this box, for example, this dinosaur right here, perfect F1, which is a female, is going to get one mutation in one of her stats, but the mutation is going to be worth 20 levels because I have paid for 10 mutations, essentially. Okay? So... It could get 20 points in any of the stats, but it will only count as one mutation. For me, because I don't like to cheese the system quite that much, I like to just get the one mutation worth two points. And this is how I breed, okay? So then what I do is we just, I have one element for each of my 10 females. Each time these females give birth, or, or drop an egg, rather, the egg will show up here in the inventory, and each egg is guaranteed to have one mutation worth two points. Now, I'm going to start breeding. You can view the breeding process here. This shows you how much time is remaining until they will breed. When that is done, they will breed, and like I said, you will get one egg with one mutation worth two points. So for me, I am working on my tech rexes. I have 14 points in, or 14 mutations in health and 16 mutations in melee. So I'm looking for a, a regular mutation in one of those two. So that's what I'll be looking for when the eggs are in here. Um, I'll be looking for basically either health or melee. And when that happens, I will show y'all and we'll be right back when that happens. 
All right, so we are back and we're at the propagator and <clears throat> we got a few eggs. And so we're going to look through these. And so we look at our male breeder right here and he's at level 475. So that means we need to find a level 477 egg with either health or melee as a plus two. And what's cool about this, obviously, is you can see um, all of the stats um, on your info here. Okay, So here's a 477 right here with, with uh, plus two in melee. So we did it right away. Um, there's another 477 with a plus two in weight. Um, and then that's it. So then we can just delete all of these eggs just by going down to destroy all. And then we have our next mutation from that. So I'm going to throw out that egg right here to incubate. I could put it in the incubator as well. Both of those work. And then I will show you guys how I use soul terminals. Uh, actually, you know what? I'm going to teach you guys the mutator first. So here we have um, my last mutated paleotherazinosaur. And if you look in the upper left, you will notice that it is a female. So that's the first thing I want to show you guys is you can change the gender of adult dinos with the mutator. Okay? The mutator is right over here. And so all you got to do, <clears throat> this thing has several modes in it. So I'm going to toss out my Therizina, but I want to go through the modes with you guys. First of all, the mutator is unlockable at level 105. And then the propagator is at 111. Okay, so the, the mutator you can actually get just by playing the game without ever getting more than the max levels, because max level is 105, I believe. Um, and the propagator is better, obviously. And, I'll, and I kind of explained to you why the propagator is better for at least mutations, okay? So there are several modes to the S plus mutator. The first one is um, swaps the gender of nearby dinos. The gender swap dinos will be immune to further gender changes for six hours, and it will not work on any dino with a mating cooldown or that has been granted a random gender by the mutator or is not an adult. So you cannot swap the gender of babies, okay? Obviously, I do this because if I get a mutation on a baby girl, then I don't throw it away. I don't have to wait for, for a mutation to be on a male. I can just keep the girl and then change it to a female or change it to a male later. Every single time you pulse this, um, this mutator costs 10 element. That's another thing you need to know right away. Okay. Next mode is grants a random, ge random gender to nearby genderless dinos. That lasts six hours. It can be refreshed by subsequent pulses. The gender will not change when buff is refreshed. It does not affect mechs or non-adult dinos. So what this means is if you have a dino that does not have a gender, for example, like a Maywing or um, mechs or um, creatures like that, this, will, this pulse will grant them a, a gender, okay? And the next one... Grants nearby dinos the ability to breed that normally cannot. All dinos conceived this way will be gestated. Some dinos do not have a baby state and are birthed fully grown. They will fall under the mesh unless they are elevated. Does not affect mechs, corrupted dinos, or non-adults. This is a really good one because this allows you the ability to breed dinos that cannot breed normally, like Rhiny Ignatha or mechs or, um, oh lord, um, basilisks. Yeah. The next one is sets the imprint of nearby creatures to the player who activated the pulse. So I think what that means, if activating player is the imprinter already, then it will increase the imprint quality by 20%. So essentially any babies that are out will be imprinted by you. Next one is stops nearby dinos from aging. I'm not quite sure what that means, but I have a feeling it means that it does not get XP anymore. I think causes nearby non-adult dinos to grow much more rapidly. 
So you got to be careful with this one because if you use this one, it does, um, it does make your babies grow much faster, but it, it can mess with your imprinting. Okay. Um, so you just be careful with that. And if you want to use this with the nanny, for example, um, the nanny can automatically imprint the babies or whatever, but it may not, um, it may not get the last imprint. So you'll have to possibly do that manually. It's a good way to grow your dinos faster. Again, this all cost element. Um, the next one is sends out a pulse of radiation that causes nearby dinos to lay mutated eggs or gives birth to mutated offspring. Multiple stacks increase stack gain per mutation. This is the one where it's essentially what the propagator does. The more element you have, um, it, it, it'll pulse out to every single dino that is within its range. And each one of those dinos will lay a mutated egg. Um, the more um, the more element it has, so again, like the propagator that we talked about earlier, um, it does one or ten. Wait a minute, yeah, one element per two two point mutation. So if you do ten element per creature, then it's going to give you one mutation for twenty points in each egg. And so the difference between the mutator and the propagator is the mutator makes makes the dinos have to be placed, okay? They have to be placed. They can't be in the inventory of the mutator. The propagator, you can just put all of the animals in cryo balls or cryopods or um, soul soul traps, put them in the inventory and just and just breed them that way or mate them that way. This makes you put them on, um, place them in the world, and then it sends out a pulse, okay? And this one, um, we already talked about. So, swaps the gender of nearby dinos, which is what we're going to be doing for this Therizino. So, we're just going to go ahead and pulse it. You'll see it'll get a little symbol there. Look away, look back, and now it's a male. So we're going to grab Therizino that's now a male. And we're going to place him with the females. And then I will show you my operation in here as the last part of this series. And how I check every single day. Whether I have mutations. So again, I keep them all hitched. That way they will breed while I'm away. Uh, just copy settings to nearby Therizinos. And then we're good. So now, I have five soul terminals there. And four soul terminals here that are all collecting babies. Alright, now I also have air conditioners strategically placed in the corners of the building right there so that way no matter where an egg drops it will incubate all right and then between all nine of these soul terminals um they reach this entire building I also have a second floor up here where I'm doing a couple other species. Obviously, I have more space that I could be doing more, but this is where I'm at right now. All right, so this is how I check. We just go through our soul terminals. All of these, all of these um, soul traps in here represent one baby that has been born since the last time I played on the server, which was last night. Um, so essentially we just go through and we're just looking for, like this is a 381. Um, it's funny because this goes for the color mutation series video that I did. This is a mutated thylakaleo. It's got a plus two in oxygen, which obviously I don't need, but it has a color that I really like. I love purple. So I'm going to keep that because it has the 207 purple color. Then when I'm done, all I got to do is destroy all the souls. And what's great about destroying the souls is you get the XP as if you killed the dino that you just 
destroyed the souls for. So this is a great way to level up your character as well. Because you are literally getting kill XP for every soul that you destroy. And so all you're going to do is just hover over. Um, 298, so I'm looking for 300, level 300 um, shadow mains. I'm looking for level 320 megatheriums. I'm looking for level 381 thylakaleos. And I'm looking for level 319 daspletosauruses. We don't have any of those there. All right, so Feroxus is a new creature that I just started with. Um, and they are obviously broken. Yeah. We're going to have to go back and look at, look at them because they're... All right, let's just very quickly... 34, 33, 38. Yeah, they're not the same. We're going to have to start them over. God dang it. All right, so all Feroxuses are not viable right now. I made a mistake. All right, so again, I'm just scrolling through, looking for mutations. 320 on Megatheriums, none. 381 on Thylakaleos, none. Uh, Displetosaurus, 319 is what we're looking for, and we don't have any of those. So we can destroy all of those. On to the next. Um, again, the Feroxuses are broken, sadly. Hmm. All right. We're not, you know what? We're not going to get rid of them, though. Because I can probably get my perfects from them. All right, so here we have a level 300 Shadow Mane with a plus two in melee. It's a female, but again, we can use the Mutator to um, gender pulse it. So we're keeping that one. And the only way that would be obsolete is if we found a male 300 with, male, with melee or health. This is a male 300, but it's uh, in weight, right? Yep. And we have a... Um, 320 in food for um, Megatherium, so not needing that. 320 in food, Megatheriums, don't need it. We're looking for 381. We got a 381 Paleo Thylakaleo with the two points in melee. It's a female, so we'll keep that one. 381 male with two points in food, we don't need. 319 Displetosaurus is what we're looking for in health. There we go. We're on a roll this morning. Okay. Okie dokie. So we're going to keep that. 300 Shadow Mane. 300 Shadow Mane male with two points in melee. Perfect. 381 Thylacleo Oxygen. 319. No. Okay, so that's done. So because I have nine of these soul terminals with 300 soul traps in each one, that's 2,700 babies I could get before I need to to check these. Um, let's see. Just going through quickly. 381 melee. All right, so now we have... Greater UDs here as well. 325 is the number we're looking for, but not in oxygen. So that's no good. And 300. 381. All right. Nothing there. there <clears throat> and nothing there okay so then what I do since I have multiple babies to choose from I have a, 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 a terminal off to the side where I keep the extras just in case something happens so I have let's see here I have two shadow mains 
three thylakaleos and a Despletosaurus to choose from, okay? So unless the female has the color, a color that I really want, then I am going to keep the male, okay? Almost every time, because that's going to save me 10 element from having to swap genders, right? Um, so the male, this one here is actually a dye, so we can get rid of that one. That's a color one. So now my choices are between... Seven, they're both 74 in melee, but one has that color and one has this color. So I'm going to choose the one with the, the 14 because that is black, and I like black. And so we have our three that we have gotten. Shadow Mane, Thylacleos, and Displetosaurus. So then what I do is I grab the old breeder from each of those species so these will stop mating. We don't need them to continue mating because we have mutations for them now on the next the next generation. So I just take them, the three that I don't want breeding anymore, and we put them into a different terminal where we keep all of our breeders and, and anything that we have to do with, with our lines. That way we have all of the dinos in case we need them for whatever. Like if something rolls back or you make a mistake, you have the dinos, okay? <clears throat> and then um, we are going to go out. And I have my nanny here. This is the last thing I wanted to show you guys. She is pretty awesome because if you're not familiar with her, she can imprint your babies. Okay? And she feeds them too, up to 15% uh, maturation. Really, really helpful. That way you don't have to mutate the animal, um, imprint the animals, right? So let's see here. We're going to do this, this, shadow mane. So then what I do is, because I have a bad memory, I write down what I'm going to name it. This one's going to be 8H49. That's 8 mutations in health for 49 total points. And then 9 mutations in melee, 9M62. And then we toss the shadow meat out. And we name it that. So that means we have 17 total mutations on the shadow main. All right, the Despletosaurus is now at 10M63. 17M73. Beautiful. Name him that. That way we can keep track of all this as we go further and further. And last but not least, we do the Thylacaleo. And the Thylacaleo is an 8H64 and 10M74. Now, I started the Thylacaleos and the Shadow Means at the same time, and they both have the same amount of mutations. So that's interesting, too. But yeah, that is uh, mutations for dummies, guys. This is um, how you do it with mods. It's super easy. The quality of life with modded mutations is so much better. Obviously, you can decide how easy you make it. Um, you can make it so that you have one mutation that gives you 20 points in a stat. For me personally, I don't like to cheese the game that much. I, I keep it at one, uh, one mutation for two points just because I still want the game to feel somewhat natural even though I'm getting a mutation every egg or every birth. But the good news is uh, it's still giving me RNG, right? So um, I still have gone more than more than a day on the propagator um, before I got the mutations that I wanted. So there was still an RNG effect to it. Um, but 
you know, this is also forcing me to have to go get Element all the time. And Element um, can be problematic if you're on a map like uh, Ragnarok, you know. But yeah, that's Mutations for Dummies. If you enjoyed this video, please show it some love. This took some time and effort to make. And if you'd like to see more like this in the future, please let uh, you can go ahead and subscribe. And if there are any specific videos you would like to see, please let me know and uh, I can start working on them. Um, I will catch you guys down the road.